Thank you for your patience. We'll apologize to uh, Dean Nye at a later point. We had no idea that this one procedural vote, we still have three votes that we haven't done yet. There's still in well, the what, first How vote. did it come out? Did we impeach or not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I also want to respect your time on this. So, not at uh, all, sir. Mr. Shays had, had a question hanging in the air, which you've now had all this time to, to get prepared for. So, And the, and the question was, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The question was, um, that why do we call it terrorism when, when the 9-11 Commission unanimously said this isn't terrorism, it's Islamist terrorists, and they've been targeting us for years? Uh, I asked Joe why I think he used the term that you uh, took uh, issue with, and he said he blew it, it was inadvertent. The near-term threat is al-Qaeda, which is uh, Islamists, and that's what we have to concentrate on. I take issue with the word terrorism. It's the only time in my recorded history where Mr. Rumsfeld and I were on the same side of the issue. Mm -hmm. Terrorism is a tactic, and so I would prefer the Islamist extremist uh, right now, and then there are, could be other extremists out in the future. I mean, the lesson that people have learned, and there are some funny people out there, could be transported to other terrorist groups who don't happen to be Islamists, but you're exactly right. This is the present threat. This is a proper uh, acknowledgement would be Islamist extremism or terrorist. Well, you've got me to think about the term terrorist to radicals or, or extremists. And, and uh, because you say terrorism is basically a, a tactic rather than a, yeah. Yeah, I've, I just noted that we didn't have a war against kamikazes. Well, it was a tactic. It was a tactic. You don't have a war against snipers. It's a tactic, and that's what what terrorism is—a tactic, in my view. So it's a semantic thing, and I, I mean, it's probably not even important. It's just always occurred to me. One of the things that, that that I wrestle with is in the in the 50s, I grew up where I began to understand that we had a to confront the Soviet threat, and it, we we basically contain, react, and mutually assure destruction. But the American people bought into that. I don't have a sense that the American people have a sense of what the threat is and what our, our strategy is to deal with that threat. And I don't feel like we have debate about it in the, in the public marketplace. I don't think our candidates talk about what our strategy needs to be with. And uh, it just surprises me that we haven't had that. And I just make another point to you. It's, it's, I'm struck by the fact that even the strategy to deal with the communist threat got changed a bit after Sputnik. It was, I felt it, it primarily was military in the beginning. And then we said, my gosh, it's military, it's economic, uh, it's, it's um, technology. And in the end, we probably beat them as much by technology uh, and our economy as we did with, uh, with our, our military might. Well, indeed, I, I, I think we probably didn't get off the right foot in the Cold War, but, you know, we did apply smart power. And let me, let me give you an example. I was being facetious about the Joe and I uh, French Revolution comment, but uh, one of the advisors to Gorbachev was a fellow by the name of Yakolev. He's the fellow who came up with the term perestroika. He actually, back in the bad days of the Cold War, when we were tightly constraining the number of Soviet citizens who might come here, he actually studied at Columbia. And he studied under a professor who taught him about pluralism. And Yakolev went back to the, to the then Soviet Union uh, with an idea that pluralism could work. And 20 years later, he was the advisor. So it took a while to realize that investment. But we realized that investment. Well, let me just thank you for all your good work to our country and service for so many years. You, you have been an advi advisor to so many people, and I appreciate all your input uh, whenever I've called on you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I'm going to ask you just one brief question. Yes, sir. We had Walter Isaacson in uh, testifying on an earlier panel, uh, and one of the th things he was talking about was the creation of the possible creation of new treaty alliances. Proper which, sir? I'm, I've left one ear in Vietnam, so I'm having a little trouble. <laughs> I don't know which side to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he talked about creating some new treaty alliances, or the possibility of that. Do you foresee any of that? rearranging some of the uh, alliances that we have or staying within the existing ones moving forward? I don't see rearranging our exist existing alliances. We do see new structures. For instance, sir, we've got a G8 structure, which we well know. We think we could add uh, usefully five other members to that for certain items, such as environment, 
and things of that nature. We envision making more use of the G20, which together uh, accounts for about 80% of the, the gross domestic product of the world, about 80% of the, uh, the, the carbon emissions. So there are new groupings that we can see using some of the existing structures and expanding them. Mr. Secretary, is there anything you'd like to comment on to leave us with today? No, I very much appreciate you making the effort. Well, I appreciate you and, and Dean and I coming forward today and appreciate the report and hard work of the entire commission and the two of you gentlemen and uh, appreciate, again, as Mr. Shays said, all your service to the country today. Pleasure, sir. Mr. Shays wants to have the last one word. One last question. I don't want to get you in trouble. If there, this isn't a question you want to answer. But when, I, when, I've gone to Iraq, when I've gone to Iraq, I've been struck by the fact that had we had an embassy there, we would have known what a pathetic condition the economy was and so on. We just would have had people around. And I'm just struck by the fact that we should have an embassy in North Korea, in Iran, in Cuba, um, and not have politics play a role in whether or not we have a place. Well, uh, back in 91, when we still had an embassy there, uh, we knew a lot. We didn't know, however, that Saddam Hussein was going to strike into Kuwait. So we'll know some things and not in others. Uh, the, your a broader point, from my point of view, uh, we ought to be talking to our enemies as much as we're talking to our friends, and we ought to have the courage of our own convictions and, and confidence in our abilities to sit at a table with these characters and not have our pockets picked. That's been lacking. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Thank Chairman, Mr. Chase, thank you.